joining us right here on this fantastic day in one hour, everyone. Stay tuned to ABC 36. We are taking a live feed from ABC New York all about the eclipse, so make sure you watch that. Awesome. Do you care about the eclipse? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, let me introduce you to Jean Shafiroff, who has been on our show before. She's a philanthropist and lives in New York, an author as well. We asked her to come back. Of course, Katie is away Yay. for the next three days. How are you, my friend? I'm great. You're bringing a little <laughs> bit of difference for us on the set today, and we're going to have a conversation a little bit later on in the show, but we appreciate you coming on and spending three days. You flew in yesterday. And where are you staying? At the Marriott. At the Marriott. Mm -hmm. We love that. Yes. Kentucky, New York. Different feeling, huh? Just I a love little. it here. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> it's fabulous. And I love animals. And so here you have all the beautiful horses and the horse farms. And so for me, this is a real treat. Plus, you are home to the eclipse. We are That's home right. to the eclipse. It has been all over the news nationally. There's that little town in Kentucky. That Hopkinsville. Uh, Hopkinsville, yeah. is that what it's called? Um, where they believe they had a Martian land there not so recently. <laughs> How long ago? <laughs> then maybe they did. <laughs> Who knows, people? Maybe he's um, hosting the <laughs> show right now. <laughs> well, I don't know, trust me. Um, how are you, Lisa? I'm doing good. Good. Doing good. How was your weekend? It was great. Yeah. Hung out with the kids. Went I've to got the pool. no video to show you. I anyone. know. I yeah, know. you didn't post anything. No video evidence. This time. I went off to um, the First Best Baptist Church over at Winchester. Gee, it's a beautiful church. Oh, really? They sing like no tomorrow. And have you ever been to a Baptist church and heard them sing? I've heard Baptist singers and they are off the charts. Off Fabulous. Jean, <laughs> I cannot tell you, very emotional, the movement that comes over you. I got a little bit teary. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it yeah. was just mm -hmm. absolutely mm -hmm. gorgeous. But before we get on, we need to tell you what's happening this weekend. Take it away, Lisa. Yeah, well, if you have you ever wanted to be a music superstar, well, guess what? Now is your chance because Covey's Auto and ABC 36 would like to present Lexington Idol at the Fayette Mall Saturday, August 26, from 10 to 6. If you're between the ages of 15 and 28, register now at WTVQ.com for your chance to sing live in front of our judges. The top three contestants will receive a frontline pass to the American Idol auditions in Louisville. Registration ends August 23rd, so sign up now, get those vocal cords warmed up. Uh, how do we feel about that, everyone? <laughs> I think it's great. You know, I this one awesome. can sing. I love it. Let's she hear. She can sing like no tomorrow. <laughs> we caught her at some honky tonk <laughs> just the other day, <laughs> and she posted some video. If everyone didn't realize, wow. go back to last Monday and have uh -huh. a look on Midday Kentucky's Facebook page. <laughs> and she, your husband's over in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. serving for our nation here. Well, God and bless him. Oh, thank you. And he'll that. be back before you know it. Oh, I can't wait. When end December? Of, end of November. End of November, mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. soon. Maybe he can pull you back into line. No. You know, <laughs> out there, hope to You're doing a good job yourself doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to first of all, before I get on to the, our first topic, Jean, as a philanthropist, as a philanthropist, well, how did you decide to get into that to begin with? Why did you feel that it was your calling? Yes, well, I grew up with the nuns. I went to 12 years of Catholic school. You're a good girl. <laughs> well, <laughs> I try, <laughs> but nobody's perfect. And I'm certainly not. I'm far from perfect. And then my dad was a school teacher, so he would come back from uh, teaching the children and, and teach us. And then my mom was a stay-at-home mom, and we always learned about how important it was to think about the underserved and people that had less than... Mm -hmm we did and so that's how I got involved initially right from the start as a child that's great. and then um, as an adult when my children went off to school um, I got involved with their schools I was a class mother and then I got involved with their schools annual funds where we yeah. would go and ask each parent um, not for big sums of money but just to participate by giving some small amount of money to the school and I've noticed here that you're on the board of Jewish Board of Family and Children's Services, Youth Counseling League, a division of the, the Jewish Board as well, Southampton Bath and Tennis Club Charitable Foundation, um, was on the Ellen ha Hermeson, is that correct? I chaired their gala, Ellen Hermanson. Foundation? Yes. Um, You've been on, you're, you're everywhere. Well, I'm, I'm on a lot of boards. I'm on seven boards and I remain a Catholic. However, the Jewish Board is a, the largest social service charity in the state of New York with a budget of $250 million. We get a lot of uh, government funding and we serve everybody. 
similar to Catholic Charities, similar to many other yeah. charities, and um, also on the New York City Mission Society Board. We help the most underserved in New York. I'm on the New York Women's Foundation Board. We're about empowering women, helping them to get out of poverty. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm on the French Heritage, which is a national board. American Humane Society <sighs> Ambassador. I'm on a few boards. You're and busy. I'm you very know, busy, I'm but I love it. I feel I so feel blessed. Like you feel like you don't do enough? Yeah, I feel like a real slacker. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a real slacker <laughs> over here. That is fantastic, Jean. And Jean said when she was here last time, everyone, that it doesn't be a f being uh, on these boards and doing what you do doesn't mean you have to go out and raise millions of dollars. If you want to be a philanthropist and make a start in your community, it's just time to begin with, isn't it? Absolutely. And I suggest to people in the book that I wrote, Successful Philanthropy, that you start by giving time. Start with donating an hour or two hours of your time a month to a charity or to the school. Mm. And then give your knowledge because everyone has something to offer. We do. And then later on when you have money, I, or if you have money now, you, sh you have an obligation. That's a nice when thing to say. I think so. When yeah. you have, I, I th think those that have have an obligation to do and to give. Give forward. Absolutely. I agree. Yep. Hey, Jean, are you ready for this next topic? What do you wear to the gym? <laughs> 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 oh, you don't go to the gym? No, I do. Well, for years I wore baggy pants. Okay. And then finally I broke down and started to wear leggings. Mm -hmm. Right. But I went to a store that just didn't sell leggings. They sell leggings that pulled you in, pulled you up, did oh, everything. Oh, fancy yep. ones. Nice. All right, well, let's talk about <laughs> this for a moment. A fitness blogger has sparked a heated debate over an acceptable gym wear after sharing an encounter with a woman who has been shamed for working out in a sports bra. Before we put the picture up. Oh, there it is. Too late. Now, there's the leggings. This is also what she wore. See the sports bra and the shorty shorts? That's what she was wearing to the gym. Here's the thing. There's been an outcry saying very wearing very little and that's not acceptable. Do you think, looking at that, that it is acceptable gym wear? I think it is. I, I don't see oh, anything. Do? I do. I do. I don't see anything wrong with what she's wearing actually in the picture. I, you know, I mean, the covering up is, is another outfit that you can wear. I mean, okay. I see people dressed both ways. Yeah. You know, I'm not there to judge people. I don't care what they're wearing as long as they're covered up in, you know, all areas that are important. I don't care what they're wearing. I'm, I'm more focused on okay. what I'm doing at the gym. Well, let me tell you about this. It's had 20,000 likes on the picture, but there's also been a lot of controversy saying that it's a double standard, and a lot of the commenters said it was a double standard as many gyms ask male clients not to take their tops off while working out. Mm -hmm. So what they're saying is that she's, you know, not naked, mm -hmm. but she should be putting more clothing on. Right. You know, the, the, the men, I mean, they wear the muscle shirts or whatever. Now, my gym... And they're barely on. Let me, let's be clear. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a piece of fabric. And it's just real loose or whatever. But, you know, with what she was wearing, actually, at my gym, they do not allow that type of... Midriff. Yeah. you really? have to You have to have the midriff covered. Wow. Sounds like you're in Utah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Right here in Lexington. Yes. Well, I took a close-up look at what she was wearing, in, and it looks a lot like underwear to me. Okay. Um, I'm not crazy about it, but I do believe that we all have the right to wear what we want to wear when we work out, so long as it's not offensive to others. Mm -hmm. When it becomes offensive to others, I think we need to think about it. And I think we have to have a little sense of modesty, mm -hmm. um, because if we are embarrassing others by what we're wearing, then maybe we ought to I change. Think that's yeah. Jean, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> no. You've got a brain. Well, I'm right. fine. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. I was going to. I was thinking you were going to say it was a okay. No, even though I'm from New York. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Okay, well I let's. I didn't love <laughs> it. I honestly didn't yeah. love it. I thought yeah. it was too much like a Calvin Klein ad for underwear. I got mm -hmm. you. Well, tell um, us what you think. Head over to our fit, uh, Midday Kentucky Facebook page. You posted the story up I did. there. Now let's move along from the gym to also now talking about um, cutting sugar. Is this cutting yes. it out of kids' diets? Yes. Well, what they did, um, they cut out added sugars out of children's diets and they follow these children 
um, over weeks time frame. Actually, it wasn't even, it was a week and a half. It was 10 days. They cut out all added sugars in their foods. And it wasn't like they were giving them, you know, like uh, gluten-free, you know, things that weren't tasty. I mean, these kids were eating regular foods, like for instance, um, what they did was they cut out the sugary yogurts, pastries, cereals, and instead they were fed hot dogs, bagels, fruit, and pizza. So, I mean, it wasn't a change in their diet, and they weren't trying to look at Hot weight. dogs and bagels? Yes, yes. And that's what they, mm -hmm. they substituted because they don't have the added sugar. Right. All they were focused on was getting rid of the added sugar, and the results were striking. What they found was that the diets, the diets with the, re with the refined sugar taken away, improved al almost all areas of their metabolic health, including their blood pressure, LDL, which is the bad cholesterol, yep. blood sugar, insulin levels, and it improved their liver function test across the board, all of the kids. How old were these kids? And they were children. But they were obese, it says. They were, there were 43, 43 obese children, and uh, they had chronic metabolic conditions such as hypertension. So mm -hmm. they didn't give the age of the kids in here, but they did not. And if the kids started to lose weight, they would give them more food because that was not the goal. They did not ah. want to, them to lose weight. They wanted to look strictly at the metabolic rate. Jean, did you have a mayor in New York that tried to cut out the jumbo size sugary drinks? Mayor Bloomberg. That's right. And he received um, both positive and negative comments. I thought it was great, mm -hmm. but a lot of people felt, well, what right does my mayor have to tell me that my children can't have this or that. But the truth of the matter is that um, when you cut out sugar, mm -hmm. your blood pressure changes, it lowers, like you said. Mm -hmm. um, there is less kidney damage, there is less um, diabetes. So many positive things happen. And when we teach our children to eat well, we are giving them life lessons that they can use for their entire life. Mm -hmm. And of course, obesity is an issue. I remember Michelle Obama had a program to fight uh, childhood obesity. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a very important thing. And um, I think we have to look at what we give our children to eat. And we have to think about it. And sugar is absolutely one of the foods we're supposed to eliminate. As moms, do you think you have a responsibility to your children to make sure they are being fed the right types of food? Yes, mm -hmm. I think yes. as a mother... Because a lot of people say no, because they say, well, it's not always up to the parents. If your child is overweight, that's not your fault. You try, they say. I think you have to be very gentle. Now, today, we like all different uh, body shapes. It's, it's cool to be tiny, it's cool to be medium-sized, and it's cool to be large, but we have to think about health. So when you... Um, give your child food at home, you have to think of what am I putting into their body? Is this good for them or mm -hmm. is it bad for them? And if you know it's not good for them, you have to keep it at a minimum, mm. like sugar. Yes, absolutely, I think? agree. Exactly. What do you give your kids when they go to school or do they buy lunch? Um, I pack their lunch. and do you? Yes, I do. And um, Jackson is gluten-free, so I, oh, I right. use a lot of gluten-free. Uh, but I mean, it's <coughs> peanut butter. He can have peanut butter as yeah. long as the school allows it or this classroom allows it. Um, but I give him peanut butter and, and you know chips and things, a normal diet, what you would think is normal. But also um, with Harrison, the same thing. I'm not perfect. I mean, I don't, you know, it's not... It's not, um, you know, all veggies and fruits and. But know, it's that changed from when thing. your daughter was going to school. We try to have a healthy diet at home. Yeah. As a matter of fact, um, we bought a lot of organic, my husband and I, and we still do. And I never really served a lot of red meat. I grew up on steak every night of the week. My I'm, mom. I'm missing a good <laughs> piece of steak every month. <laughs> but we had I steak have every single that. night, and uh, chicken was a big treat in my house. Oh. I love chicken today. There's a, there's a song this called, is all I, eat I feel now. like I'm chicken chirping. tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Jean, well, chirp away. We're going to miss your topic. We're going to get to oh. commercial break. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> hey, everyone, up next we'll learn more about forensic 3D am animations from Sidham Reconstruction and Investigation. We'll be right back after this short break, everyone. You're watching Midday Kentucky.